When white nationalists say they hate Muslims, Latinos, refugees, and queer folks, their hate list often includes another minority group, Jews. The Tree of Life Synagogue Massacre in Pittsburgh, which left 11 worshippers dead, reminded Americans that hatred of Jews is not simply a problem of the past, or only one in Europe. Anti-Semitism, or hatred of Jews, actually has a long and often violent history in the US. It's also frequently been used by white nationalists and other right-wingers to rally support against social and progressive change. We had white supremacists who are once again rising to uh, remove Jews from, from America, who say they're, they're not white, that Jews are an infection, Jews are a stain, and they're a threat to white society. In his statements on social media, the Pittsburgh synagogue killer connected his hatred of Jews with his hatred for Muslims and refugees. So where exactly does all this hate come from? American anti-Semitism doesn't exist in a vacuum. It actually finds its way to the U.S. from Europe, where Jews have been persecuted for centuries. Jews, along with Muslims, were deemed a threat by politically powerful churches and persecuted by authoritarian rulers looking for scapegoats on which to blame social and economic problems. But in America, virulent anti-Semitism didn't really take off until 3 million Eastern European Jews immigrated here in the early 20th century. This migration also happened as part of a much larger wave of migration of some 20 million people from Eastern and Southern Europe to the America. And so Jews were part of that too, just looking for economic opportunity, political liberty, and religious freedom, and so on. Many Jews were escaping pogroms, anti-Jewish massacres stoked by the monarchies of Eastern Europe, often as a diversion from challenges to their own power. There was massive pogroms that took place in the 1890s. There was one in 1901, 1903. And then with the 1905 attempt at a revolution in Russia, Jews had invested themselves very fully. Nearly one third of those arrested in the opening days of that violence were Jews. Like other immigrants at the time, Jewish immigrants faced xenophobic, racist, and anti-Semitic hostility both in their neighborhoods and in the U.S. press. And so you began to see anti-Semitic images of Jews as capitalists, and so you have pictures of Jews in top hats carrying bags of money. Anti-Semitic incidents were frequent during this era, including the lynching of Leo Frank by a mob in Marietta, Georgia, a violent tactic commonly used to terrorize African Americans in the U.S. South. He had come from the North to manage a pencil factory, a young white girl was found murdered and sexually assaulted in the factory, and he was blamed with the thinnest bits of evidence. He was tried and convicted, and while his the sentence was being appealed, a mob broke him out of prison, dragged him to Marietta, and hanged him. But anti-Semitism during this era went far beyond what happened to Leo Frank. Remember the Jewish participation in Russian revolutions mentioned earlier? Jewish involvement in these uprisings against the tyranny of Russian monarchs spurred a new theme in right-wing propaganda, that Jewish revolutionaries were conspiring with Jewish bankers to take over the world. Accusations that Jewish revolutionaries and bankers were behind movements for social change became a rallying cry for white nationalists to suppress campaigns for workers' rights and black civil rights. You have figures like Rosa Luxemburg and Trotsky, um, who were very active in left-wing uh, communist governments and movements. And so you begin to see images of Jews as sort of, you know, the bomb-throwing radical. So you have these contradictory images that exist at the same time. Which brings us to Father Coughlin, a Catholic priest who in the 1930s was notorious for railing against Jewish bankers in many of his radio addresses, something that white nationalists and the alt-right continue to peddle. Coughlin's vehement opposition to communism had overt anti-Semitic tones and was a part of his conspiracy theories about a Jewish takeover of the world. And today, Jews are being accused of doing the same thing as being part of an international global conspiracy through organizations such as the United Nations and international human rights organizations. White nationalist sentiments had prompted the U.S. government in the 1920s to adopt immigration quotas that sharply limited Jewish and Italian immigration. As a result, the U.S. denied entry to Jewish refugees fleeing Nazi Germany and the Holocaust. Jewish immigrants in particular were accused of being conspirators against American democracy and white homogeneity. Sound familiar? That's very much the same rhetoric that we hear against refugees from Syria today who are escaping religious persecution. This is the same rhetoric that our President Trump is using right now against migrants who are coming up from Central America and hoping to find sanctuary in the United States. And a younger generation of Jewish Americans have become more vocal about calling out attacks on marginalized communities. 
Rachel Goldstein of If Not Now, a Jewish activist group which opposes Israel's occupation of the West Bank and Gaza, is calling for further solidarity between minority communities. When there's anti-Semitism, when there are anti-Semitic attacks, that's not just an attack on Jews, it's really an attack on all communities that are marginalized. In the decades since the Holocaust, however, the white American mainstream has largely integrated Jewish Americans. A Pew study from 2017 found that more than half of Americans rated Jews very warmly, higher than any other religious group. I've been really fortunate to grow up without experiencing a ton of anti-Semitism, um, especially not its, in its most vicious form, but I know that my grandparents experienced things that were much different than what I am, even my parents. And to be a fourth generation American Jew is a really different experience. All of this violence is interconnected. And I have to say, as a scholar of Jewish history and someone who's part of the Jewish community, it seems incumbent upon Jewish Americans to recognize that our fate is bound up with the fate of other oppressed people in America. Meanwhile, the recent rise of white nationalist and alt-right groups has seen them unafraid to espouse bigoted views towards Muslims, Latinos, African Americans, the LGBT community, and Jews. Before and after Pittsburgh, activists in many of these targeted communities have called for a united response. Here is Palestinian American activist Linda Sarsour addressing Jewish Americans in front of the White House at a vigil for the victims in Pittsburgh. I'm here today with my Arab American and Muslim family who came out here to send a very loud and clear message to all of you that we love you, we stand with you, we are willing to risk everything so that you too could have a right to practice your religion freely in these United States of America. And remember what happened at Charlottesville? Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! This now famous moment was actually an echo of a traditional white nationalist rallying cry, suggesting Jewish bankers and Bolsheviks are behind people of color struggling for social justice. And at this time, with the political climate that we're in right now, with the rhetoric that Donald Trump is sharing with his base, it has sort of allowed for anti-Semitism to come up to the surface, to make it more acceptable for white nationalists to explicitly say things like, Jews will not replace us. The alt-right and white nationalists consistently use terminology that can only be described as not-so-subtle attacks on Jews. So the term globalist that's being widely used today to attack George Soros and other Jews is another variant of the term internationalists, which was used in anti-Semitic documents. The Jewish billionaire and philanthropist George Soros is today's incarnation of the Jew that white nationalists love to hate. For decades, he's funded the progressive causes and groups that nationalists in both Eastern Europe and in the United States cannot stand and seek to discredit often as foreign menaces. This belief that there are wealthy Jews who are controlling world events with a goal to destabilize Western countries. Trump is not only sounding an anti-Semitic dog whistle to cue other people, he's making straight out anti-Semitic arguments himself now. President Trump has come under heavy criticism for his response to Pittsburgh and Charlottesville. He's been accused of fanning the flames by targeting specific groups through racist policies and rhetoric. He has opened the door and given legitimacy to a group of people that have been sidelined and marginalized, and he has just removed the rock under which they had crawled and given them free reign to engage in their activities. Robert Bowers, the killer at Tree of Life Synagogue, had said online that he was targeting Jews because they were helping invaders that kill our people, and named a Jewish charity helping to resettle Muslim refugees in America. Unsurprisingly, he had also ranted about the caravan of asylum seekers from Central America. So how are American Jewish communities responding to attacks by the white nationalist right? Well, for some, it's about recognizing the connection between anti-Semitism and other forms of bigotry. I am a young American Jew who hasn't had to experience uh, quite the amount of pain that some of the older folks in the American Jewish community have. So as a young person, I see it as a very clear path forward that our future is bound in the future of others and the future of other people who are being targeted by white nationalism. Jews need to make, I think, uh, a decision. I think we're at a crossroads in some ways about how we're going to approach this. Are we going to reassert our place within a white society and align ourselves with the state, align ourselves with authority, or are we going to see that our fates are linked to that of other oppressed peoples in the country?